P-O-S-T. P-O-S-T. Post. The serials you like the most brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's roundup time on the double bar. So saddle your horse, cause we're gonna ride for. The Double R Bar Ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills, the wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis, the Queen of the West, Dale Evans, and in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. <laughs> Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. Believe me, you can count on anything bearing the brand name Post. And I'm proud to recommend Post cereals to you. So get your mom to put them on the shelf, and, well, you try them as a favor to me, will you? Well, sir, Paradise Valley, it's hot, really hot. This is the kind of a day almost anything could happen. Take the money back, right? We'll split the loot of the meeting place like we planned. Everything okay, Harris? Everything but this? I don't like meeting at this hotel. Uh, because Dale Evans runs it? She won't give us any protection. Our boys don't hang out here. Well, that's why I figured it was safe. Nobody gonna think of us hiding out here. Anyway, we'll be heading for the desert as soon as Bailey shows up. Bailey should have gotten here before us. The law trails you and me. He got away clean. Give my little time. Fisher, Bailey's carrying the loot from the holdup. We trusted him with that money. Yeah, Bailey isn't a fool, Harris. He knows we know him and all his hideouts. He knows if he tried to run off with the loot, we could track him down within two days. Let's... Hey. Somebody's out there. Get your gun ready. Who is it? Come on in, Bailey. You got here after all. Yeah, I had a little bad luck, boys. Okay, okay. Where's the loot? Let's split it now. Well, there's and... something I want to explain. I, I had some bad luck. Don't give us a lot of talk. Hand over the money. Come on, Bailey. We want to get out of here. But I, I lost the money. You, you don't what? try to pull Wait, that on us. help it. The law was after me. I thought it was anyway. Here, now, now, wait a minute. You're taking this all wrong. We want that money, Bailey. Right now. Uh, put away your guns. I'm not double-crossing. No, 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 don't. No, I'll get out of here. Just stop him, Fisher. Stop him. Bring him down. Get on out there and get on the street. <laughs> thunder into the quiet of Mineral City's main street, Ed Bailey falls, dead or wounded. His two partners leap through the window, hit the ground, and run toward him. Hurry, Fisher, hurry. If he's only wounded, the law will get him, and he'll talk. And that's not all. We need the money, and he knows where it is. He was lying to us. As the gunmen close in on their fallen companion, Roy Rogers and Jonah Wild, Roy's partner, come out of the store across the street with gun hands ready. There's Roy Rogers. Looks like he wants in on this, eh? Don't tangle with him. Head around back to the hotel. We'll get Bailey later on. Fisher! Harris, hold it! Yeah, they took to their heels. I'll knock them into the dust. Hold your fire, Jonah. Dale's coming out of the hotel. Yeah, yeah, there we was in that store, peaceful as could be. I was buying a doodad. See, I was buying a doodad to brighten up my thing of a bob when crash, somebody jumped out the hotel window. Gosh! Yeah, I broke the glass. Gosh! A telephone call just came in for, for the sheriff. Charlie Fisher and Dick Harris with a man named Bailey held up a bank at Squaw City. Yeah, well, that explains why they didn't take the stairs. Roy, this man lying here is Bailey, Roy. Jonah, you and Dale see if you can get Bailey into the hotel. Then call the doctor. You bet, Roy. No way to do jump through a window. Come on, Jonah. I'll head around behind the hotel and see if I can't smoke out those other two rattlers. Before Roy can get around to the back of the hotel, Charlie Fisher and Dick Harris have made their plan. Inside, Fisher. Inside, quick. We can't go back enough. But they tried to kill Bailey a few minutes ago. Now they risked their lives by coming back here. Bailey must know something, and the other two are afraid he'll talk. Yeah, well, it's a fine way to treat a veteran soldier seven, eight wars. I say, that's a fine way to treat a veteran soldier. Lambast him on the head. 
As soon as you and Dale feel better, we'll... Well, we're all right now, Roy. Just tell us what you want done and we'll do it. Well, Fisher and Harris haven't had a chance to leave the hotel yet. And we won't give them a chance. We'll get some of the men on the street to watch the windows and doors while we search. We're going to find those rattlers. Watch every door and every window, you fellas. Don't let anyone out. Okay, I'll be back as soon as I've found what we're looking for. Jonah and I are going along to help, Roy. Oh, no, you're not. Stay here and help the men guard. Now, look here. Now, what would General Thomas Kenneth Rowe say if he heard a veteran of his army consented to do only guard duty after being lambasted on the head? Why, he's Now, decent, listen, Roy, you may need you. help, and I should be with you. I know every inch of this hotel, and I know every corner where they might be hiding. Well, all right. But let's not take chances. These men are desperate. They might kill rather than be captured. Roy enters the hotel, Jonah at his side. Dale walking a step behind, pointing out places where the outlaws might be hiding. They search every room, every corner of every room. But nowhere do they find the dangerous outlaws. Suddenly, Dale steps out ahead. Roy, there's one place we haven't looked. Dale! This storage closet behind the stairway... Here. Get back here. Don't take chances. Here, see? Raise your hand. Ah! Raise. Oh. Get the girl Fisher. Hold her. Fisher and Harris spring out of the closet beneath the stairs, shooting as they come. Bailey is with them, a prisoner. They grab Dale, pull her around so that she stands between themselves and Roy and Jonah. Oh, no, you choke Put those hands up. Don't lower them for any reason or we'll kill the girl. Stand around right here. Bailey, don't you try anything funny either. Hey, you're wrong about me. I'm not double-crossing. Hey, these is a poor cat that give me the headache. Call to those cowpokes outside, Rogers. Tell them the shooting they just heard was an accident. And if I don't? We're playing for keeps. You and the men outside may take us. We know that. But if you try, we'll get the girl and you too, maybe. Call them, Rogers. We're not waiting. Tell them to stay outside. Yeah, fine way to treat an old soldier. I'm not afraid, Roy. You fellas out there, stay where you are. Never mind that shooting, just keep watching, as you have been. I'm sorry, Roy. Glad to see you're playing our way, Rogers. Now walk toward the front door ahead of us. Keep your hands above your head until you get there. And then? Then you're telling the men outside to let us go through. Now, come on. Start moving. All right, Fisher. We're leaving, Rogers. But we're taking Dale Evans alone. We'll keep her with us for 48 hours and have a two-day start on the law. Nobody's bothered us by that time, we'll turn her loose. But if we even suspicion somebody's on our trail, we'll finish her off. Stay right here by the door. I'm not afraid, Roy. I'm not afraid. I'll keep Bailey and the girl covered, Fisher. You step ahead and open the door so Rogers and Jonah don't have to lower their hands. Yeah. Now watch her close, Harris. Yeah. Uh, what's the matter with this door? Don't get excited, Fisher. Uh, the door's stuck and won't open. Maybe that's because my foot's against it. What's that? Come on, Jonah. Right. You got him. Right. Right. You fell for a trick, Fisher. Uh, We're taking you for sure this time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here's exciting news for all you buckaroos. It's news of that thrilling and popular club, the Roy Rogers Writers Club. I know each and every one of you will want to join up right away. Why, maybe you'll be one of the very first official members from your neighborhood. Now, in just a little while, Roy himself is going to tell you all about what his Roy Rogers Writers Club stands for and how much fun it is to belong. You'll find out, too, how easy it is for you to join. So, get your pencil and paper and be ready for the big news right after we hear the rest of our exciting adventure. Fisher and Harris hold Roy and Jonah at the point of their guns, threatening to kill Dale unless Roy gives them a guarantee of safe passage out of Mineral City. As they come to the front of the hotel, Fisher steps ahead to open the door. Instantly, Roy tries an old trick diverts Fisher's attention for a split second. Fisher looks away. In that split second, Roy lunges, knocking Fisher's gun from his hand. He swings on Fisher, and Fisher staggers and falls. Jonah, finish off Fisher. I'll get Harris. Oh, no, Rogers, you're not coming after me. Harris has played it smart. He was not drawn into the fight. Instead, he stood guarding Dale and Ed Bailey, just as he stands now, gun in hand, ready for a chance at Roy. He steps forward, beyond the bruised Fisher, to protect him. It's all over, Rogers. Raise your hands again. Be thankful you have friends outside. Otherwise, I'd have killed you. 
On your feet, Fisher. Uh, sure, Harris. Oh, sure. For a minute there, my headache started to go away. You'll open the door yourself this time, Rogers. Anything to oblige. Hold it. If there's any more funny business, I will shoot. That's a promise. All right. Now open the door. Tell the men outside to let us through. Go ahead, Roy. I'll be all right. Rogers, I said open the door. Here you are. Now call to your friends. You won't have the upper hand much longer, Harris. Yeah, don't now if the truth was known. Hey, fellas, these people are coming out. They're the rattlers we're looking for, but I want you to let them go through your line. Let them go through. They've got Dale. Her life's at stake. So don't raise your hands to stop them. Let them go through your line. Hey, they're gone. They're clear gone, and we didn't do a thing about it. This is the first time I saw you whipped, Rogers. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. There ain't nobody whipped. We just retired to regroup our lines. And the first person who says we didn't, I'll pin back his ears. See, I'll pin back his ears. Easy, Jonah. Yeah, Roy ain't whipped. I fit in seven to eight walls, as you all know. And I recognize a smart move on the part of a general when I see one. Roy, we'll just... Just a minute, Jonah. They've got the best of us, and we might as well admit it. But that doesn't mean they're keeping the upper hand. We're riding out after them right now. But I want you men to promise one thing before we leave. That you'll stay here and not try to follow Jonah and me. Oh, no, no. They're holding Dale as hostage. Sure. Two men may have a chance of getting up to him without being spotted. But a posse would be seen a mile away. And that'd be the end for Dale. Now, how about that promise? Oh, I, I uh, good enough. Come on, Jonah. Let's get our horses and pick up the trail. <laughs> Up here, Jonah. Up on these rocks. Yeah, I'm coming, Roy. Oh, oh, here, Trigger. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, Titus. We should be able to see him from here. Yeah, and I wish I wish I had the spyglass General Thomas Kenneth Rowe used to have. I'd say he, he could see a sand fly crawling across the cactus at 300 yards without batting. Hey, there they are. Both of them. And Dale. Eh? Hey? Where? Headed towards Rocky Gulch. Sure enough. Yeah, I'll fix him. <laughs> Hold it, Jonah. Put that gun away. I'll get to that, Dad. Well, they're out of range. They're a good mile ahead of us. You're only tipping them off that we're on the trail. You'll be putting Dale in danger. Oh, yeah, that's right. Trouble is, though, a thing like this makes my soldier blood boil up. You know, I forget this ain't a long-range musket. Come on. We'll ride on down and get on the trail again. They're still gaining on us. Getting dark, Roy. Yeah, I know. The past 15 or 20 minutes, I've been having trouble finding the trail. Well, one thing's certain, the horses ain't going to last the way they're pushing them. We'll have to stop, Jonah. Eh? For the night, you mean? Sure. We can't do anything else. Oh, but I've been on many a forced march, Roy. I say I've been on a many one. I can stand the pace. Hey, don't you worry about me. I know you can, Jonah, but we'll lose time if we keep going. We'll miss the trail or we'll use up our horses. Yeah, I suppose you're right. We'll unsaddle and rest. Then start out again when the sun comes up. I'm glad General Rowe ain't here to see me give up pursuing the enemy. Sometimes a man can press himself too hard, Jonah. If General Rowe was smart, he'd have understood that. Yeah, well, now there's the whole trouble. That fellow wasn't smart. He was dumb. Okay, okay. Well, let's get some rest. One thing sure, tomorrow's another day. <laughs> Doggies, sun's hot early this morning, ain't it? Yeah, don't make no difference. We're on the trail. Looks like they mean to head straight across the desert, Jonah. Yeah, they, they're playing it smart, that's what. Once they get across the desert, they'll be in a different state. The law will have a hard time bringing them back. Wait a minute here. Whoa, whoa, Trigger. Whoa, boy. <laughs> Jonah, you've just given me an idea. Oh, sure, it's nothing. Got lots of them. Learned them the hard way, too. See, I learned them the hard way on the field of battle. They are trying to get across the state line. And they figure to do it within 48 hours while Dale is still with them. No, sir. I never was no parade ground Horatio. But they're taking the back trail in order to keep away from the main roads. That adds 30 miles to the trip. And it means they'll have to go without water except for, well, what they may have in their canteens. Yeah, they'll be real thirsty before they finish their trip. They and the horses both. There's just one place on the back trail where they can get water. Last Hope Springs. Let's see. With any luck, they'll get there around noon tomorrow. Be as thirsty as a dried-up camel. Say, we could take the main trail and save that 30 miles, then cut across to the springs and be there ahead of them. Yeah, yeah, be waiting when they stagger up there all dry and parched. 
<laughs> I tell you, Roy, I hate to slap myself on the back, but there is nothing like a battle-scarred soldier to give man ideas. You're absolutely right, Jonah. And while we're riding, I wish you'd think up another idea how we're going to handle the situation after we find these rattlers to keep Dale from getting hurt. <laughs> Roy and Jonah ride carefully to save the strength of their horses, knowing they'll be at last Hope Springs hours ahead of the outlaws. But Harrison Fisher, guarding Dale and Ed Bailey, ride under pressure, trying to make every minute count. They use their water sparingly. The heat is intense. You gotta let me stop it! I'm wounded. I'm in pain. Fisher, do something about that man. No, I can't go any farther. I got a fever and I need water. Pull that horse around. Get in line. No, I'm stopping. I won't go any farther. Get in line. I said nobody's stopping. Wait a minute, Fisher. No, I'd rather die and go on. But my wound hurts me like this. Ah, we ought to finish her right here. No worse off than day 11. You don't hear her complaining. Yeah, but I got this wound. There's nothing you can do that would make me complain. Get down off of that horse, Bailey. You're, you're not going to kill me. Get down off of your horse. Oh, I'm sick, man. My throat is burning. Here's water, Bailey. I've got a little left. Don't give it a him. We need the water for ourselves, Harris. Would you like a drink, Bailey? Yes, 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 please. But you're the man who lost the money bag. You lost the loot from the holdup. Ah, don't talk in front of her, Harris. Why should we give you any water? Yeah, but I, I hid the loot. I didn't lose it. What, your dirty yeah, 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 give me a drink. Give me a drink, and I'll tell you where the money is. Tell me first, before you get a drink. In the hollow of that tree that lightning struck, just north of Mineral City, near Fred App's place. Here, yeah, come on, give me the water. Here. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, Harris, we need that water for ourselves. There's only a few drops, Fisher. We can get along for a while. We'll reach Lost Hope Springs by noon, and there'll be plenty of water for everybody then. The wounded Bailey licks the last few drops of water from the canteen greedily as his hate-filled companions watch. Dale alone holds herself in check, determined not to give way either to thirst or the blistering heat. Roy and Jonah have arrived at Lost Hope Springs and are waiting for the coming of the outlaws. Uh, doggies, this is what I call a real hot day, Roy. It's a real hot day. It's pretty bad. Yeah, she'll be glad when it's over. If it gets over. And if we're still living. <laughs> you know, I remarked the same thing to General Thomas Kenneth Rowe during the Battle of the Frying Pan Valley. Is that so? Yes, sir. And it turned the tide, too. I say, it turned the tide, too. That one little remark caused the enemy to be whipped to a frazzle-dazzle. And it just seemed like you... <laughs> Oh, Roy, you ain't paying me no mind. Oh, I'm sorry, Jonah. I was just watching those four riders just beyond the big sand dune there. Eh? Four riders? Yeah. The three hombres we're after, and Dale. It looks as though our troubles will all be over, one way or the other, within a few minutes. Hey, the way they're coming, the horses must smell the water in the spring. Keep behind this rise, Jonah. Don't let them see us. You're a doggone bet you. Trigger, I've got a little job for you to do, fellas. <laughs> As soon as they're on the ground, I want you to run their horses off. Understand? Hey, Fisher's running for the spring, Roy. Well, when he bends down to take a drink, put a shot in front of him. Yep, just like the Battle of Worm Canyon. I'll take care of the rest. All right. Let him have it. Oh! Bell, drop to the ground, quick! Have you got that pencil and paper ready? Well, hold on. Here comes a special surprise for you from Roy Rogers himself. Uh, howdy, friends. This is Roy Rogers. I'm especially pleased to be able to extend a personal invitation to you from Dale, Trigger, and myself. We'd be mighty proud to have you become a member of our Writers Club. Maybe you've heard about our Writers Club already. We've got several million members throughout the country, and our aim is to bring you lots of fun through honesty, loyalty, and friendship. And I'm sure you'll gain a lot of fun being one of our members. Of course, you'll get a beautiful membership card entitling you to all the rights and privileges as a Writers Club member. And you'll get an official badge to wear, too. Here's the big surprise. Every single member gets a big 16-page comic book in full color. This is our official Roy Rogers Writers Club book. It's packed with adventure about Dale, Trigger, Bullet, and me. And, oh, yes, you'll get a full-color autographed picture of Trigger and me. We'd be mighty proud to have you become a member, and if you'd like to be one, here are the details on how to join. 
Yes, friends, card, badge, comic book, and picture. All yours when you join the Roy Rogers Writers Club. And to become a member is so easy. Just take the top from one regular size package of any of the swell tasting post cereals. Mail the box top with only 10 cents and your name and address to Post, P O S T, Box 7767, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now, write that down while you remember it. That's post, box 7767, Chicago 77, Illinois. That's all there is to it. Just one post cereals box top, one dime, your name and address, and you're a member of the Roy Rogers Writers Club. Have fun. Join up today. Drive those horses off. Take them out of there, fella. I'll take care of the girl, Fisher. Roy, he's going to shoot Dale. No, he's not. Oh. Uh, doggies, you stopped him. Jonah, watch Fisher. Uh, draw on me, will you? Roy, Roy, did you see that? Did you see how the gun went sailing out of his dirty hand? Good work, Jonah. Oh, sure. General Thomas Kenneth Road be proud of me, all right. Hey, you hombres, listen. You're without guns now and without horses. You'll get no water unless you surrender. What's your answer? Dale, come this way. We'll cover you. Dale walks toward Roy and Jonah. The outlaws stand where they are. Fisher's face, burned by the sun, streaked by sweat and alkali dust, is blank. Harris, from head to toe, is filled with rage. A rage which goes out of control for a moment. He's whipped. He knows he's whipped. He'll go to prison if he gives up. But if he doesn't give up, he holds himself in check. Then says unsteadily, We surrender, Roger. We're your prisoners. We'll walk this way. Keep your hands over your head. We got him, Roy. We got him. The three men come forward slowly. Bailey, weakened by the effects of his wound, drags himself across the hot sand. Within minutes, Trigger has rounded up the horses. The outlaws are securely roped, and then with Dale at their side, Roy and Jonah ride herd on the gunman towards Mineral City. I don't want another ride like my last one, I can promise you. Jonah and I were worried about you for a while, Dale. Weren't we, Jonah? Yeah. One good thing, though... They hadn't taken me. We might never have found out where they'd hidden the loot from their holdup. Yeah, some good came out of it anyway. Jonah, you're not saying much. Well, I'm thinking. Thinking? About what? Well, sir, the day at the Battle of Frying Pan Valley, when I remarked how hot it was to General Thomas Kenneth Rowe. Yes, sir, it is, Joni. <laughs> he always called me Joni, General Rowe did, yeah. Yeah, it's too blamed hot to fight, he says. And he walked off the field. But I thought you said you won that battle. Oh, sure. Well, yes, we did. Washington got so mad at the general for walking off the field of battle, they fired him. Yeah. yeah. He went and joined the other side, and he didn't know nothing without me to advise him, so he led the other side straight into defeat. And we won. Brother. I bet. Yeah. Now, Dale, don't you start doubting Jonah's word. He's my hard-riding sidekick, and I wouldn't be worth anything myself if it wasn't for his advice. <laughs> Oh, no, sure. Uh, Jonah, here's your gun. Uh-huh. You dropped it back there during the excitement. I, I guess you kind of forgot to pick it up. Oh, sure. When evening chores are over At our ranch house on the plain And all I've got to do is lay around I saddle up my pony And ride off down the trail To watch the desert sun go down Riding down the canyon to watch the sun go down A picture that no artist there could paint White faced cattle owing On the mountainside I hear a coyote whining for its mate Cactus plants are blooming, sagebrush everywhere. 
granite spires are standing all around. I tell you folks, it's heaven to be riding down the trail when the desert sun goes down. A picture that no artist ever could paint. White face cattle on the mountainside. I hear a coyote whining for its name. Cactus plants are blooming. Sagebrush everywhere. Granite spires are standing all around. I tell you, folks, it's heaven to be riding down the trail when the desert sun. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling Roger Show is brought to you by Post Serials each week at this same time with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Rush production transcribed, directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Howard McNear, Bill Green, and Leo Curley. This is Art Ballinger speaking for P.O.S.T. Post Serials. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling on till then Who cares about the clouds if we're together Just sing a song and bring the sunny wind Happy trails.